Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation with two variables. This is not a Diophantin equation, so we're not looking for integer or rational solutions. Rather, we're going to look for all real solutions. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's go ahead and take a look at each one. First of all, I have to tell you that y plus square root of 3 does not equal 0. That's required, so y does not equal negative root 3. If you get any solution like that, we're going to reject it, okay? So now let's go ahead and under those conditions, let's go ahead and cross multiply. This gives us x squared plus y squared plus 1 equals x times y plus root 3, all right? So that is the first step. And then from here, we're supposed to be getting an equation, right? Okay, and we're going to solve it. And you might expect infinitely many solutions. So in order to show you what this looks like, uh, I will share with you the graph of this relation. I can't call this a function yet. It is a relation. So here's the graph. And you're like, what? There's no graph. Is this a joke? It's not a joke. There's no graph because Desmos cannot graph this relation. And you'll see why in a little bit. Why can't Desmos graph it? Can any other graphing tool graph this relation? Let's find out. So let's pick up where we left off. So we have this. I want to go ahead and be lazy and carry this. I want to bring this over here. Let's go ahead and put it over here and start from this point. Okay, so now we have this equation and we couldn't find a graph for it. So let's find out why. Let's go ahead and work this out. I will distribute the x. Oh, did I tell you? This is going to be the first method. But let's go ahead and put it in some form, and then we'll talk about uh, the split, first and second, OK? And why don't we put everything on the same side, x squared plus y squared minus xy. I kind of want to bring the xy over here, minus root 3x and plus 1. I'm going to put the constant at the end, so kind of make it a little bit more standard formish. So this is a polynomial, and I'm hoping that this can be solved for all real numbers, but I have two variables. So that's the limitation, and I have to solve for x and y. So this can only work if we find a really nice uh, system. In other words, more than one equation from a single equation. And that usually happens when the sum of squares equals zero. What am I talking about? So this is what I mean. If a squared plus b squared is equal to 0, and if a and b are real numbers, then a is 0 and b is 0. So this gives us two equations. That's the condition we want to lean on, we want to be able to use. So here's my hope. I want to set this guy, the 0, equal to something like this, ax plus b squared and cx or c yeah, cx plus y squared, and then set it equal to 0. Okay, what is that supposed to mean? Why did you pick ax plus b? Here's what I, I'm thinking. I have x squared with negative root 3 of x, and then some constant. Constant can be adjusted. So that's going to give me something like this, don't you think? Okay, that's good. What about the second piece, cx plus y? Well, I have the x and y together, and I have a y squared and an x squared. Again, this can be split up, and we can get a form like this. And again, this is not guaranteed. If this doesn't work, you have to try another form. You know, sometimes you're going to have something like x plus b squared plus cx uh, or cy plus d squared and then ex plus fy squared plus some other squared, so on and so forth. This can be very crazy, but don't worry, it's not going to be super bad. I'm going to give you an easier one. So here, this is going to work. How do, you, how do we check our work? But again, the lesson is, if this doesn't work, try another form. All right? To keep a long story short, if you expand this and put it all together, right? We're going to be looking at the coefficient of x squared, the coefficient of y squared, the coefficient of xy, the coefficient of x, so on and so forth. So here's what you're going to get from here. This is the rule we're basically using. So you're going to get the following a squared plus c squared is going to be 1, and b squared is going to be 1. So I can write it as that way, uh, but this means b is equal to plus minus 1. 
And I am also getting 2AB equals negative root 3 and C as plus minus 1 half. So those are the results that I'm getting. And if you use these numbers somehow, like let's say if B is equal to a negative number, A is going to be positive. So if you choose uh, B to be a positive number, that is going to be negative, So, but it's always going to work out. So this is what it gives us. Let me rewrite my expression, x squared plus y squared minus xy minus square root of 3x plus 1 is going to turn into square root of 3 over 2x minus 1 squared plus 1 half of x minus y squared. And isn't that beautiful? Like something like this could turn into something like that. It's amazing. All right, great. So now what do we do with this? Set, since this is equal to 0, we're going to set each term equal to 0. And we're going to get the following. x equals 2 over root 3, which you can write as 2 root 3 over 3. And y equals 1 over root 3, which can be written as root 3 over 3. And this concludes the first method. And now the second method. Now I want you to let me know which method you think is better. I kind of like the Second method, even though both methods I kind of like. Anyways, I don't know what I said. <laughs> That's kind of meaningless, but anyways. So the second method basically is going to pick up uh, from where we left off with the first method. Uh, this is what we started with. And now I want to write this as a quadratic equation. It's like, what? There are two variables who are quadratic. doesn't matter. You can pick one. And in this case, I don't know. I want to go with y. So if you write this equation as a quadratic in y, this becomes the uh, negative x becomes the coefficient of y, and everything else will be constant. Make sense? Okay. So here's how it works. First of all, let's go ahead and evaluate the discriminant of this quadratic equation. So does this make sense? This whole thing is a constant because this is a quadratic in y. All right? Cool, cool. So let's call that k, that constant. So this is quadratic, and what is the discriminant? b squared minus 4ac. b squared is x squared minus 4a, which is 1. c. c is the whole constant, which is x squared minus root 3x plus 1. And if you evaluate the discriminant, you'll be surprised. Minus 4x squared plus 4 root 3x minus 4. So discriminant, or delta, is equal to negative 3x squared, uh-oh plus 4 root 3x minus 4. And this is another interesting expression, which can be written as negative 3 times x minus 2 root 3 over 3 squared. Uh-oh. How is that possible? Do the work. You'll get it. But in order to get real solutions, we have to have a non-negative discriminant. But can this expression be non-negative? It has a negative 3 in front of it and a square. So this expression cannot be positive for sure. We know that, right? It's impossible. But it can be zero. So set the discriminant equal to zero. That's the only possibility, which implies x equals 2 root 3 over 3. This negative 3 doesn't matter, by the way. If you want, you can divide by negative 3. And y becomes x over 2, because here, if this becomes zero, if you write the quadratic formula, we'll get it. That's going to be root 3 over 3. Now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph one more time. And we'll now, we now know that why there's no graph, because the solution is a single point, but Desmos cannot show the single point. Too bad for Desmos. Anyways, <laughs> OK, those are some limitations, but this is going to be the solution to this equation. So it has a single solution, and that's it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.